We're in a very quiet and cool climate control corner of the EA booth here at E3 with uh, Greg and Ray, uh, founders of Bioware and uh, one of my, or creators of one of my favorite sh games of the show, Mass Effect 3. I'm so excited to, to cool, get thanks. to finish the tri trilogy finally. Uh, could you just sort of give us a, a, your views on like, what the whole journey has been like with this trilogy uh, si since the start of it? I, I mean, it's been really exciting for us. I mean, I remember the very first time we announced it, it was actually years and years ago at a Microsoft press conference. I think I was there. X05 yeah. in Amsterdam. I was gonna say X Amsterdam. You're yeah. That was that was. A, it seems like a long time ago, but then actually, if you look at it, it's, it's only been you know six years or so. It's it's amazing, and it's been incredible. I mean, obviously, the the franchise has been really successful and really resonant with 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 the fans and it's done great and it continues to do great and you know this year even more so than ever people are super pumped about um, Mass Effect 3 so I nothing but great stuff to say. So this is the intense action filled uh, end of the trilogy but it's also a new beginning it's the beginning of a galactic war uh, so it's war on a, on a epic scale you know you're playing the role of Commander Shepard again and uh, the Reapers have taken the earth and it's up to you to make the choices that'll, that'll take it back. So you get to you get to do a lot of cool things in this game, and uh, it really your your decisions really impact the very survival of the universe. So we're really bringing it to a satisfying conclusion. We're also really showing the fans the the possibility of what might come in the future too. Oh, what might come in the future? Because uh, I think that the Mass Effect universe is such a such a brilliant thing, and I've, I've read the novel. I'm actually reading the latest novel right now, uh, and uh, the, comics I read, the comics are good, and yeah, yeah. and there's a there's a whole world of it out there, and. So, what are your wishes for for Mass Effect as as a grander, grander on the grander scheme? Oh, sure. Well, and, you know, the, it's it's the universe is full of possibilities. You know, the the Reapers have invaded. Uh, there's all these interesting galactic civilizations. Humanity's place is still far from certain, and how it's going to end up. So, you're you're, you know, you're you're really you've got a lot of di directions that the, the the game and the universe can develop. We haven't revealed any details of what we're planning beyond Mass Effect Three. Right now, we're really just focused on making sure that. We've got lots of cool tactical options for Shepard and epic cho story choices and you know, and crazy em em emotionally impactful moments. You saw some of them behind closed doors demo here and we got a lot more, a lot more that uh, we're really proud of and working on. So I'll make Mass Effect 3 the, the most epic game uh, in the Mass Effect franchise yet. So for me, for me, it's really Mass Effect, the trilogy is, is about humans' entry into this galactic space. Yeah. Uh, but I've also I would love to see sort of an angle from 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 an alien perspective and 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 that sort of thing as well. There there are lots of stories to be told in the universe. Is is that something you you would consider? Well, I think that's something we definitely think about. You know, in the sense of uh, when we look at the, the the property, it's so broad. I mean, there's like lots of places you can you can start a story and the people have certainly like the aliens have resonated really well people love the races we've created and where they are and their history and what they do so you know it's hard hard to predict exactly what's going to happen in the future with it but definitely you know for this installment it's going to be spectacular and i think people are going to get even more and more involved in the world and then you know as in terms of what we might do in the future who knows uh, now the Mass Effect trilogy is a mammoth project, but uh, another mammoth project, perhaps even bigger than than the whole Mass Effect trilogy, is uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic. Uh, just, just, I mean, it, I understand you are now more working more directly in, in Bioware Austin and, yeah, and heading that. We both work on it, though. Yeah. I mean, you know, I, I think you know, I've been working a lot on Star Wars the last year, but Ray and I both spent an awful lot of our time on it. I think, you know, in terms of importance for for EA and for Bioware, it's a huge product, and it's something we both, us and the team, has invested an enormous amount of time in, and I think we play it a lot. And it's just, it's exciting. I think, again, we're coming to the point now where you know, it's a hands-on here at the show. We're showing Tatooine, kind of fairly, not super high level, but like, you know, mid-30s, mid-level gameplay. People are loving it. I mean, they're seeing a lot of really cool stuff. We're talking about raids, you know, that we call operations. Um, you know, we've got a big boss battle. There's all kinds of other stuff we're showing. Like, there's, there's, it's getting to the point now where pretty clearly, you know, it's getting there. It's, we were, we've told, I think the official word has been, you know, this, this calendar calendar year and then on top of that really what we're doing right now is testing it I mean there have been thousands of people that have been through testing the game um, there's going to be many thousands more in the future and there's people testing and playing it right now as we speak and this continuous testing program that we've got so it's really exciting to actually be building towards this launch and the key thing for us is to make sure we launch it the great service you know we want to make sure that we launch it successfully you only get one launch we want to totally get it right so 
at E3, I mean, Mass Effect 3 is such, a, such an action-packed, immediate game. It's really easy to showcase here, get a lot of awards down there. It's, the whole wall is full of them. Uh, the Old Republic is a little bit more difficult to sort of show off at a place like this where everyone's on a tight schedule and you really need to invest hours just to see what the game is it like. Does, it does have a lot of awards too, though. <laughs> so it's, it's actually done really great as well. Like, I think, you know, I was talking, Ray and I were talking about that and we're just we're really happy with how it's doing. It's been going, hey, you know, Mass Effect is probably the best of the best. You know, Star Wars is pretty, pretty close. One of, the, one of the things we want to do with Star Wars The Old Republic, we felt it was important to give hands on gameplay. Yeah, yeah. You know, so we're showing, actually, the very first time in E3 this year, we're we're allowing uh, players to, sh to play it, and uh, their, uh, the feedback we're getting is incredible, very positive. We still got a few tricks up our sleeves. We have some stuff we haven't announced yet. Uh, we're really pleased with you know all the all the things that are how it's how it's coming together. Uh, but the, you know we're showing pretty much the broad scope strokes of the game now in terms of the feature set and elder gameplay. We're starting to show more of that and PVE and PVP progression systems, epic exploration, and you know the, the story is coming through. People are understanding now, well, what does it mean to get story in an MMO? Well, it gives you context and purpose and heroic identity, and it's really seamlessly integrated. So it's not, it's not intrusive. It actually really adds to the experience. It makes it that much sweeter. But you have all the things you expect in a great MMO, progression and customization and exploration of the Star Wars worlds and you know uh, combat, heroic combat, lightsabers clashing and sparks flying and blasters going and, and droids and everything. So it's, uh, it's got something for Everyone, and it's set in Star Wars, and it really captures that magic. You know, it allows you to play for a long, long time. And we have that plan. We want to make sure that players feel like this is going to be a service that will will, will support them and uh, make them feel like they can be part of it for a very long time afterwards. We have plans for post-launch con, uh, post -launch content. We'll announce those later, but we definitely think that's really critical. Make a strong service, as Greg said, high quality, make the launch amazing, and then capture people's imaginations for many years to come. So. Uh what I would say is the third pillar of Bioware is the, the Dragon Age series. Uh, you recently launched the second game and there's been some criticism about it. So what are your thoughts right now after launching that game and, and where do you sort of see that, that franchise moving in the future? I think you know we you know we obviously you know Dragon Age Two was was another big game from us and there's things that we took we took some did some things that maybe some people didn't like as much but it was actually all purposeful in the sense that we really want to make it more immediate make larger sense of action um, and so you know we've seen the feedback obviously and we've thought about it and I think you know, as we go forward we haven't you know announced exactly what we're doing in the franchise but you're probably pretty confident there'll be more Dragon Age stuff we'll look at the feedback and. And tweak things. I mean, we actually really always take fans and press feedback to heart. You know, consider it in the context of all our our thoughts and where we you know think we should push and where we, should, we can improve, and that's what we're going to do. I mean, maybe maybe fans are comfortable with a certain style of Bioware game and a certain pace and a certain layout and and if you change things too much they will be taken aback a little that's a good, very good point in terms of polarization you know dragon age 2 had it definitely got a lot of positive feedback it also got a lot of uh, critical feedback from fans who maybe were more expecting more of the same more dragon age origins and you know we take that feedback to heart as greg said with a, our core fans feedback you know, we really value it. Um, we want to bring them, bring them along with us on our journey as we bring more fans into the, the worlds that we create too. Because game, the game has been very critically and commercially successful. Commercially successful in that it draw a lot of people into the universe. Critically successful with a lot of new fans. And we want to take the feedback of the fans who, are, who love Dragon Age Origins to heart as well. And you'll see some things coming. I, you know, we have some downloadable content we haven't announced yet, but we're taking that feedback and actually trying to enact it in the downloadable content for Dragon Age 2 and future products in the franchise, you know, we're going we're gonna to actually maybe see the best of both worlds. You know, that's, that's what we're aspiring to. And we know, you know the fans deserve it, so we're going to do our best to make each game better than the last. With Dragon Age is an amazing franchise. We really want to make fans feel appreciated and, and feel like they can continue that adventure as well. So, uh, big news at this show, of course, is the, the Wii U and all of its functionality. Do you guys have any sort of ideas of what what that could mean for for the the genre that you dominate, the, the RPG genre? Well, I think I mean, it's something that we look at, and it's, it's a way of potentially improving in sort of streamlining interface. Like that's actually an interesting opportunity to consider. I mean, and we'll be thinking about it for a while. I mean, now that we've had you know it's out out in the world, and you know we'll see what what happens with it, how Nintendo takes advantage of it, and then also think a bit ourselves about you know what we're building, how we're building it, what we might be able to take advantage of as well. So, really, it's, it's we we tend to take a very measured and careful response to this stuff, we don't tend to, to jump right on it and, and you know, run off. I mean, we're really more thinking about, okay, let's now look at what we're building and how we might be able to involve it or, you know, find the right thing at the right time and, you know, not rush it. 
No, I, think, I completely agree. I think the new interfaces uh, that are being shown all these new platforms are really interesting. And the key is to be thoughtful in how we deploy against them so that um, everyone is, is really carefully considered. So on PC, keyboard and mice, and uh, on uh, you know, PS Vita, obviously interesting, and, and, and Move on PS3, and uh, the new control mechanics on Wii U, and, and Connect on Microsoft 360. Uh, these are all interesting new platforms in their own right, and they all provide actually really cool ways to extend the experience. And it's up to us to be thoughtful in how we approach that, and approach them all with the same level of rigor and, uh, and care, and make sure we deliver a great experience for all of our customers on all the different platforms. Something that I immediately thought of was that the fact that some, most of your games are games that you play for hours and hours on end, and I think my girlfriend would appreciate being able to use the TV and I could just sneak <laughs> off with the controller for a while. Yeah, that'd be, that'd be cool. I mean, it, you never know how. I mean, there's lots of different ideas. They, once you get the the, the, uh, the controls and the, and the development tools in the hands of the creators, our teams, you know, they come up with some amazing ideas. So, you know, we'll have to see what the future will bring.